Yo what's up guys it's t -Bag, and today we have yet another worst to best ranking video. You guys wanted me to rank all maps in Battlefield 1 from worst to best and you guys are absolutely crazy. You know that there are 29 infantry maps plus 2 air assault maps to go through. So sit back, relax, grab something to eat and enjoy the video. I'll try to go over these maps rather quickly so it doesn't get too boring. Also please note that my opinion is based on the conquest layout of these maps so not TDM or operations or anything like that just regular conquest I will mention if the map is a lot of fun on these game modes but the rankings are 100% judged by the 64 player conquest game mode so I hope you guys are ready but first what you see right here is the Sennheiser PC37X gaming headset from Mastrop. Mastrop was kind enough to send this over to me to see if I like it and if so to share it with you guys and obviously since you're seeing this I really do like it. As many of you know Sennheiser is an audio first company and that really shows as the sound quality is crystal clear and you really hear the in-game audio as it was intended. You also have a built-in microphone which you can plug in separately and what I really like is the comfort which really comes in handy for those hour long gaming sessions. You also have a 2 year warranty when you purchase these so no worries there. Again a big thanks to Massdrop for sponsoring this video, all the information you need is down below. So anyway let's quickly mention the two air assault maps, they are not really included in this list since they are not infantry maps but if I had to rank one over the other it would probably be Razor's Edge over London Calling simply because it's sunny and I like to have a physical floor beneath me. So let's start with the first infantry map on this list. The one map that I hate the most. I'm sorry for anybody who loves this map but it's Monte Grappa. Every time this map is next in the rotation I just quit the game. I really do not like this map. Main reason is because of the weird layout, like it's actually, the whole map is actually one big slope and it's really not that fun to run all the way up the hill where people can see you coming from miles away. And there are very few points of interest, for me at least, and it's just not that fun to me. On operations however, it's pretty okay and the TDM section, you know, in the castle is pretty cool as well. Next up we have Tsaritsyn, one of the smaller maps in Battlefield 1. The main focus of this map is obviously the cathedral in the middle and inside of this cathedral it's often just a meat grinder without really a tactical presence. The map is decent on the outside, but since the focus is always heavily on the inside of the cathedral, I rank it like this. Moving up the ladder we have Galicia, aka Sniper Fest, aka Artillery Truck Fest, aka just a flat open area with very little cover and often no close range fighting. Those are enough reasons for me to not like it. Next up we have one of the latest released maps in Battlefield 1, Caporetto, which is part of the Apocalypse DLC. And by the way, in this DLC we only got 3 infantry maps, which is kind of stupid in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, Caporetto has kind of the same story as Galicia as it's mostly very open without much 360 cover. Meaning that, yeah, you can hide behind a rock, but most likely people will still shoot you in the back. The most annoying part of this map is that one team begins uphill. But that's most likely because it's a conquest assault map and not just regular conquest. Though I must say it is one of the best looking maps in Battlefield 1 period. Like it's actually gorgeous. Up next we have Volga River. Again very similar to Galicia as it's very open most of the time. But it does have more points of interest and more close quarter battles. Next map on the list is Nivel Knights. Now the two night maps were pretty hard to rank in my opinion. I like the overall concept of these maps but for some reason it just doesn't click with me. With Nivel Knights it's mostly fun inside of the trenches but above it's a bit random for me. I find myself getting killed from all angles at all times. I think it's no surprise that Priest the Tahir is ranked above Nivel Knights. It's basically MEN at night, which is really really cool, but I just hate the people who camp in a little dark corner the entire round. Up next is Albion, and at first I really like this map, and I still kinda do, but it's just annoying when you cleared a certain part of the map, let's say the part near the light tower, and then you have to cross multiple bodies of water before getting into combat again. The only fun part of the map is the middle part which is in all honesty pretty cool. Next up is Lukau Pass. I'm kind of 50-50 on this map. On the one hand it's pretty cool since it's a very rocky terrain. There is no real leveled section of the map 
But on the other hand, it just doesn't flow that well in my opinion. Also the planes in these maps are for the most part pretty damn useless. Empire's Edge is next up on the list and from this point on the maps are getting better and better. Uh, technically they are all getting better since I'm ranking these from worst to best but you know what I mean. Empire's Edge is an interesting map, in my opinion it's best played on operations. The sections there are really really cool and balanced. On Conquest though it's an interesting map as well as it has a lot of points of interest and there is a good balance for CQB and sniping. Though there are only 3 flags that are often contested which means 70% of the map is pretty boring. Up next is Cape Hells or Cape Hellas or whatever. Very interesting map yet again, a lot of open terrain but certain parts are for CQB. Kind of the same as some of the other maps, but in this map there is a bigger emphasis on the L-Class Destroyer, which is only available for the assaulting team, as this is yet again a conquest assault only map. Next up we have Foul Fortress, and I really really like this map back at launch. This map was very popular in operations, as this was part of the Oil of Empire operation. This map is especially fun in the castle area where TDM is happening. Next map is Rupture, again one of the better looking maps in this game with those beautiful red flowers. This map is not that insanely big but still a lot of long range combat can be happening. The tanks are not overpowered at all in this map and there are plenty of places where you can fight in close quarters. I do often see that when one team is dominating that the E flag is the only fighting place, which is a little bit of a bummer. Next up is Heligoland Bight, and the layout for this map is pretty damn interesting. There are no tanks, but there are plenty of boats. Each team has access to both a Dreadnought and an L-Class Destroyer. Also planes and C-Class airships are heavily present in this map. As for infantry combat, most of the action happens on the beaches on the outside of the big rock in the middle. In my opinion, if the rock in the middle would be a bit smaller, and if it would have a very simple cave system, this map would be so much better. The next map on the list is Swansong, visually one of my favorite maps in Battlefield 1. I just like it when it's sunny and when everybody is fighting in the town area. Lots of great and tactical gameplay there. But what I really dislike about this map though, are the artillery truck hill campers on the French spawn area. It's really, really annoying. Up next is River of Somme. Again, I really like the look of this map. One thing that's quite unique to this map is the foliage. Not a lot of battlefield maps have enough grass and plants and bushes and stuff like that to hide in. In this map you have and you can play pretty tactically with it. Except if you are spotted of course. The next map is one of the very few linear maps in Battlefield 1, it's Zeebrugge. This map has quite a unique way of playing. First of all, it's heavily focused on the naval warfare. You have L-class destroyers, C-class airships and torpedo boats, but it's also very balanced in terms of the infantry combat. In the middle of the map it's very linear for infantry combat but still very balanced when it comes to enough cover and flanking routes. Like I said, this map is pretty unique. Up next is Fort DeVoe, I mean what can I say about this map, it's the metro of Battlefield 1, pretty much the only meat grinder in this game, some love it, some hate it, I like it a lot actually and that's why I rank it like this. The next one is Vadan Heights, I really really like the look of this map, it's pretty much just hell on earth, everything seems to be burning, you know everything has a red tint to it because of the heavy fire in the distance. And the layout itself is pretty good as well. Main fighting point is in the middle where you can fight above ground as well as underground a little bit. This is also the map where I had a perfect game with the trench raider. So that means most kills, I had 50 kills, 0 deaths, your team ended up winning the game and you were MVP. Pretty proud of that. Up next is Sinai Desert and I rank this map this high mostly because of the town area plus I just like desert maps. One thing that I really don't like in this map is the furthest flag, all the way out into the desert because it's so far away nobody goes there and it's pretty much a big waste of the whole map. Giant Shadow is up next, a really great map overall, great balance, great look to it as well with the crashed airship, bit of a chaos within that airship since there are two flags to capture, a lot of cool points of interest and it plays great with the new Shock Operations game mode. Achibaba is also a great map, didn't really like it at first but it slowly grew on me. It reminds me a lot of Argon Forest where it's an infantry only map, you can go on top of the cliffs and you are forced to play within the passages. Up next is Passchendaele and the reason why I like this map a lot is simply because of how it looks. This map honestly looks like it's the end of the world. 
On one side of the map you have a huge gas cloud and on the other side of the map everything is burning. All buildings in this map are in ruins and it just feels like a proper World War I setting. I also really like Brussels of Keep. For some reason when I see this map in a voting poll I pretty much always go for it. There are no big terrain differences on either side. You have multiple passages to go to the middle where all the fighting is happening and the area with all the buildings is a great place for all close quarter battles. Now we are entering the top 5. Up next is the map Emia. I don't know what to tell you, I just really like close quarter urban maps. Most players are often on the same level, there is no real high difference except if you go into a building, there are tight places where you can get crazy kills and plenty of flanking routes. The tanks can be a bit annoying though at some times. Argon Forest is on the number 4 spot, again an infantry only map. With lots of tight places and close quarter battles, still pretty balanced in my opinion and lots of natural cover and you also have a playable area within the bunkers, which is pretty cool. St. Quentin's Scar is on the number 3 spot for this list, the very first map we saw for Battlefield 1. This was the map we saw with the closed alpha and even today it remains to be one of my favorite maps in Battlefield 1. It's a big map with lots of urban combat in the middle, multiple close quarter points of interest and plenty of opportunity for sniping. On the number 2 spot is probably as big of a surprise to you as it was to me. It's the map Suez. I really didn't think that I would like this map so much. A lot of people say it's unbalanced and that it often results in one team dominating the other. And while it's true in some cases, I realize that I pretty much always have a good time on this map. It's a linear map with lots of small buildings where you can climb on, shoot from, you can play a cat and mouse game, like it has a lot of gameplay dimensions and I really really like that. So yeah, Suez is on the number 2 spot, who would have known. But now, for the number 1 spot, the best map in Battlefield 1 according to me is Ballroom Blitz. In my opinion this map has everything, you have plenty of sniping opportunities from certain places, you have a great close quarter combat scene within the ballroom, lots of points of priority to capture such as the walkway up top, tanks, planes, all that good stuff, I notice that I often have the most fun on this map. Do you guys agree with this list? Probably not, let me know down in the comments why. Like the video if you enjoyed watching, thanks for the recent support on the channel, we just hit 35,000 subscribers and a discord server for all of us will be up very soon even though I said this for the last 5 months. Thanks for watching and I see you guys next time.